on 17 March 2020, we at Auction House Künke will sell the Samel collection of Jewish coins and medals in our auction 334. It is one of the most important collections that have been built on this topic in the last decades. In this film, we'll show you a little part of the collection. It covers the Jewish monetary history from the Persian period to the two Jewish wars. Let's start with this Hamia bowl, minted at some point between 539 and 333 before the Common Era in Jerusalem. I have to admit, it's hard to see anything at all on this piece. One needs to know that the coin features the bearded head of a king with a jacked crown in order to identify it. It is the Persian king with whom the Jews traditionally had a good relationship. After all, it is said that Cyrus II was the one who put an end to the Babylonian exile. These early Jewish pieces are called Yehud coins because they bear the inscription Yehud or Yehuda. This was the name given to the region of Judea. The inscription remained even when the area changed hands. This coin reminds us of the time when Judea was under Egyptian rule. It was probably minted in Jerusalem in 261-260 under Ptolemaic control. It depicts the same motifs that we find on Egyptian coins. King Ptolemy I on the obverse and an eagle on the reverse. This hemiobol weighing 1.75 gram is probably one of the rarest Jewish coins at all. The Hasmoneans were the first Jewish dynasty whose rulers minted coins on their own behalf. They came to power as a result of the Maccabean revolt. Hanukkah still reminds us of the fact that Judah Maccabee reconsecrated the Temple of Jerusalem in 164. His successors produced an abundance of bronze coins. The Samuel collection entails all types of depictions that dominated these issues, the cornucopia and the pomegranate, the lily, the wreath with an inscription referring to the high priest and the Jews' council, the star and the anchor, and of course the palm front. This double pruta minted either in Jerusalem or Samaria doesn't fit into the scheme at all. On one side it depicts two overlaid cornucopia adorned with ribbons, on the other side a Macedonian helmet. Johannes Nolé, the author of Künke's catalog 334, assigns it to the reign of John Urcanus I. He assumes that it was minted for a specific event that we do not know of. There were enough opportunities to do so. After all, John Urcanus enlarged his empire decisively in the years of his reign between 134 and 104. Of even greater importance is this extremely rare pruta of Antigonus Matatias, the last ruler of the Hasmonean dynasty. On the obverse it shows a showbread table. On the reverse the menorah, the seven-lamp lampstand. It's the only ancient Jewish coin depicting the seven-lamp menorah. By then the Romans had already been the decisive power in Judea for quite some time. Their ally, the Idumean nobleman Herod, served as governor of Jerusalem. With the help of the Parthians, Antigonus Matatias drove him off. Of course, Rome couldn't accept that. However, due to the civil war following the assassination of Caesar, Rome had to deal with different issues. Therefore, the Senate solved the problem by making Herod king of Judea, leaving it to him to reconquer his kingdom. Traditionally, this coin is associated with Herod's siege of Jerusalem. It is said that Antigonus Matatias conjured the people of the city 
with this coin to prevent the most sacred objects from falling into the hands of an outsider like Herod the Idumean. Herod won in spite of all ideological armament. Even though he has a bad reputation today, he tried to find a balance. On the one hand, he founded cities in the Greek style. On the other hand, he rebuilt the Temple of Jerusalem. This coin might be collected to the temple. On the obverse, it shows an eagle like the one Herod had, had mounted over the entrance of the temple. This was a violation of Jewish tradition and caused turmoil. Young rebels destroyed the eagle and were executed because of that. After the death of Herod, Augustus made use of the power vacuum to break Judea into small and significant territories under the rule of Herod's sons. Herod Archelaus was given Samaria, Judea and Idumea. Here we see one of his coins. On the obverse, it features a grape with the inscription Coin of Herod. The legend on the reverse with the Macedonian helmet is much more interesting. It calls Herod an Ethnarch, a tribal chief. Augustus downgraded him from a king to a tribal chief. His brother, Herod Antipas, was the ruler of Galilee with the cities of Nazareth and Tiberias. Herod Philip got the northeastern part of his father's empire. The Bible associates him with a beautiful Salome, the Salome who demanded and received the head of John the Baptist. The three brothers were brought up in Rome. That becomes particularly evident in the coinage of Philip, which challenges Jewish tradition. This coin shows us his portrait. Philip was the first Jewish ruler having coins minted, featuring himself. The reverse of this coin refers to the imperial cult of Rome. It features the Roma and Augustus temple that Philip had had constructed in Caesarea. But back to the heartland, to Judea. Herod Archelaus became so unpopular that Augustus had him removed from office in year 6 of the Common Era. His territory became part of Roman Syria and was from then on administered by a prefect as a sub-province. The most popular of them is probably Pontius Pilate, under whose administration this coin was struck. His name cannot be found on it. We can only tell by its dating to the 17th year of Tiberius' reign that Pontius Pilate was responsible for it. The obverse shows the Litius, a crooked wand used by Roman augurs to predict the future. Was the depiction of this religious symbol due to Pontius Pilate's ignorance of Jewish customs? Or was it a planned provocation? What we know for sure is that he didn't show any consideration for the religious feelings of Jews in other contexts. Therefore, it came to unrest. The emperor reacted by removing him from office in 36. Judea was administered by prefects until the First Jewish War, with one brief exception. Herod Agrippa, grandson of Herod the Great, ruled from 37 to 44 over a territory that was almost as large as that of his grandfather. He owed this to his excellent connections. He had grown up in Rome with Caligula and had supported him and his uncle Claudius. Therefore, his coins are imbued by Roman ideas. This coin, which was minted between 42 and 44, commemorates the fact that Agrippa congratulated Claudius with golden wreaths for his victory over the Britons. The obverse shows the emperor crowned with a wreath by Agrippa and his brother Herod. The reverse depicts clasped hands as a symbol of the eternal alliance between Rome and Judea. But the sympathy between both regions did not live for long. Two Jewish wars took place, the first one from 66 to 70. Then 
under the rule of Bar Kokhba from 132 to 136. The Samel collection does not only contain the Jewish coins minted during these two wars. It also focuses on Roman coins, on a subject of subjugating Judea. All the humble images used by the Flavians to decorate their coins are especially impressive. That was politics. After all, Vespasian invoked this victory to justify his claim to the office of emperor. But that would be enough material for an entire film by itself. We at Auction House Künker would be glad if we aroused your interest. It would be wonderful to welcome you on 17 March 2020 to our auction sale of the Samuel Collection in Osnabrück. If you have further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us.